Today we're finding more gratitude for moms. I'm out here in the beautiful fall weather. You might hear the boys next door playing. You might hear the helicopter overhead or the birds chirping, but I'm hoping you can just kind of savor this moment of gratitude. Okay, never mind. That's way too crazy. I now remember why I never film outside. All right, gratitude for moms is harder than it sounds. We know deep down that we have so much to be grateful for, but the daily grind with our kids and with the housework and all the other things on our plates can make it really hard to show up in life from a grateful place. And if you're like me, you're tired of people telling you to great to start a gratitude journal. Is that what they call it? Yeah. Because writing in a journal is just not a habit I'm gonna pick up today. So I have got something even better for you today that is a sure way for you to experience more gratitude in your life and by the end of this video you will be able to tackle the hardest part of your day by achieving a feeling of gratitude which we know for a fact equals a happier and healthier life google it there's so many studies out there so if life's been getting you down lately gratitude might just be the solution you're looking for as i said in my video about love gratitude feels good it's a positive emotion that comes when we acknowledge the goodness in our life. So if we're not doing that, it probably means that we are focusing on the bad instead of the good. There's nothing weird or wrong with you. It's human nature to focus on the things that aren't going well in life. We all do that. All it means is that we need to consciously override that tendency, which is a skill that I'm teaching you how to do. The reality is that we don't only want to feel gratitude when life is good. It's during the hard parts that we'd really benefit from being able to tap into a positive feeling of gratitude. I have talked a lot lately about the fact that we are not at the mercy of our circumstances. We can take control of our thoughts and our feelings no matter what's going on around us. So whether our kids are doing what we want them to or not, we want to be in a place where we can feel love for them. I will link that video. And whether we live in our dream house at the beach or not, we want to be able to feel content. I have a video on that too. Basically what I'm trying to say is that we want to be able to feel good anytime, no matter what's going on around us. We want to take ownership and control of our feelings so that we can show up in life the way we really want to. Gratitude is no different. Of course, we're more likely to feel grateful for our kids when they're being sweet little angels and looking so cute, but what if I wanna be grateful for them even when they're talking back to me or doing something that I don't love? Trust me, we can choose this feeling. All we have to do is start taking control of what we're thinking. The reality is that there are thousands of things that cross our minds throughout the day, and the majority of these might be negative right now. We might even be convinced that more than half of our day is spent living negative moments or doing negative tasks. If we want to feel grateful in these, we have to be willing to expand our attention beyond what's right in front of us at that particular moment. So we will be practicing zooming out on our life to see the big picture, which really is, in my opinion, what gratitude means. All right, let's do this. First, pick one time of day or one specific situation that you find yourself in every day when you want to feel gratitude instead of what you normally feel, which is probably some type of negative emotion. Maybe it's doing the dishes, maybe fixing dinner, maybe changing a diaper, listening to your kids arguing, that moment when your husband leaves you in the morning for work. <laughs> Pinpoint a time or situation that is consistently problematic for you. Next, answer the question, why is this a problem? Well, all I do is clean up after everyone. No one ever helps out around here. I hate changing diapers. My kids never get along. He is so lucky he gets to go somewhere all by himself every day. Now remember, we're not judging ourselves for having these thoughts. There's nothing wrong with these thoughts and we certainly don't have to stop thinking them but there's a chance that we're tired of all the ruckus they're causing on our emotions, on our life, and so we may decide that we don't want to think them anymore. This is honestly the most important step of this entire process, so fill a whole page if you can on why this is a problem for you. Why is this so hard for you? Get it all out there, as ugly as they might sound, 
it's very, very important to know what's going through your mind. The last step is to pick a grateful thought. Now, I'm always telling you to pay attention to what's going through your mind, and then you can choose on purpose if you want to think something different, right? Well, today we are going to really focus on the something different part. We're all unique. What works for my brain won't work for your brain, so you'll need to experiment. And I have a few pointers for you when you're trying to find that new thought. Number one, there's no right answer. Do not waste your time or put pressure on yourself to find the perfect thought or the right thought. There is no best phrase and only you can be the judge for what you pick. Be willing to experiment and change it up until you land on something that really sticks and resonates for you. Number two, find what feels good and true to you. Even when we know there's no one right answer, we can still find ourselves thinking that we know the right thought that will fix everything for us. We think we know what the end goal is and so we just plug that phrase in and then wonder why it doesn't work. A new thought is useless if you don't believe it. Number three, remember that you're in charge. You get to think anything you want. There are zero rules and no one gets to tell you otherwise. Think of this process like you're going shopping. You're browsing for a new pair of pants and so of course you're gonna go and try a bunch of them on and see how they fit. You're gonna notice how they look and how they feel and basically figure out what feels most comfortable to you. Same is true for thoughts. Don't be shy about trying them on. Try to make it fun for yourself. You don't know if it's gonna fit until you try it. So. Here we go, let's try on some new thoughts just for fun. I'm stepping up to do the dreaded task of dishes and I think to myself, imagine if I didn't have running water. <laughs> that brings gratitude for me. Fixing dinner, I'm really happy to not be eating cereal tonight. I personally do not love cereal, so I'm grateful to be fixing dinner. Changing a diaper, there's a really good chance that I won't have to do this forever. Kids arguing, what if their lungs didn't work and they had serious medical challenges so right now I was sitting in a hospital instead of my own home. Husbands leaving for work, I'm really grateful to be a part of a team. All right, I wanna dive a little deeper on one of those so that I can circle back to the second pointer about the new thoughts. Let's take changing a diaper. All of this time leading up to this point, I have been thinking I hate changing diapers. That feels totally true to me, but I don't like thinking it because of how it's making me feel. I'm feeling ungrateful, I'm feeling frustrated every single time I change a diaper. So I do want to pick a new thought. Easy, I'll just swap out the word hate for love. I love changing diapers, and I'm gonna think that every time I change a diaper. The only problem is that this is way too far of a stretch for my brain. It does not feel true at all to me, which means that when I say it, I don't feel gratitude because I simply don't believe it. So instead, I need to play around with what is believable. My child needs my help right now. This is something he can't do for himself. I know he is so grateful for me right now. This is part of being a parent. This stage won't last forever. This is a way for me to show my love. Someday, I might miss doing this. I am grateful for disposable diapers. Thank goodness this wasn't a blowout. There's only pee in this diaper. My child is growing so fast. My baby loves me so much. Look at her cute blue eyes. I love hearing her little voice. One-on-one -on -one time is just the best. Once you get going, you could probably go on and on finding phrases that bring gratitude into your heart because you love your child and you really do have so much to be grateful for. And that is what we are going to tap into. We're gonna choose to focus. Every single time that we're changing the diaper, we're gonna choose to focus on one of those thoughts, whichever one fits the best for you right now. It can always change later too. We know that our feelings come from our thoughts, which means that if we want to feel more gratitude, we need to decide on purpose what we want to be thinking about ourselves, about our lives, about everyone around us, about the tasks we're doing, just all of it. I am so grateful for all of you. I love spending time with you and cannot wait to see you again soon. That is so loud. <laughs>